Jerry Inglis converted the drive and discipline learned on the football field into a successful career in business. A star center with the Golden Bears from 1973 to 76, and twice a Canada West All-Star, he won the J.P. Metris Trophy as top lineman in Canadian University football. He played briefly for the BC Lions and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers before finding his true calling in hospitality. Inglis opened Canada's first Chili's restaurant in Edmonton and is now president of Brinkers Canada, Chili's parent company. A firm believer in giving back, he's also served as offensive line coach with the Golden Bears and has sat on the board of regents of Atoll Murray College, Notre Dame in Saskatchewan. I was born in uh, Swift Current, Saskatchewan, affectionately known as Speedy Creek. Uh, spent some time there and then moved to Regina. And at that time, no one in my family had been to university, so it was something brand new. There is no question that, uh, for me, the U of A was, was absolutely, for me, a TSN turning point in my life. My wife and I met my last year there in 76. Uh, she was doing her Master of Science uh, at the university. We met there, we've been married 38 years. One of the things that I learned from the U of A is, is to try and work on trying to give back to have the quality of education that we were able to get from the U of A, um, you know, seemed like the right thing to do. Chuck Moser spent most of his career helping build the U of A's exemplary athletics program. Oh, oh, oh. there's a little message for you. You guys got that, eh? A talented athlete in his youth, winning championships in baseball, handball, racquetball, and squash, he was even more effective as a sports administrator. He served as trainer-manager for Golden Bears football, then became the U of A's assistant athletic director, overseeing 25 varsity teams and always insisting that academics come first. He created Gooba, the U of A mascot, and later served as the inaugural executive director of the Alberta Recreation Parks and Wildlife Foundation. In 2000, he returned to the U of A and spent a decade managing development and alumni affairs for physical education and recreation. Building the tradition of athletics at the university during the years that I was there was huge. We had su successful teams in all sports and became a power in the C CIU, is what it was called then. And that was a real source of pride. I developed as an individual uh, being part of that faculty. Just the, the green and gold spirit, which is so strong amongst the, the alumni and, uh, and about, amongst the athletes. There's so much pride there. That was, that was a big deal in my life. and still is. I mean, we're, here we are promoting and helping out with a golf tournament today. Oh my God. You've done this before. Routine, routine. Donald Monroe was one of those rare gifted athletes who excelled in two sports, starring at times as both football quarterback and basketball point guard. He led Bears basketball to two Canada West titles as captain and was a key player with the Edmonton Town Hallers senior team, competing at the highest level in Canadian basketball in the 1950s. In football, he cut his teeth as quarterback with the Edmonton Wildcats before joining the Bears as halfback in 1958. Monroe went on to an outstanding teaching career with Edmonton Public Schools, coaching high school football and basketball, and also working as a referee for high school and university games. I would have to say that the University of Alberta pro provided me my background for a successful uh, career in education and dealing with people. Working with kids and just seeing how they come along, uh, you know, that, that I think is really rewarding. The advantage of team sports is that everybody is different. Their level of competency is different. And it's important that, you know, that they recognize this. It's the same as marriage. You have two people, you know, and uh, so you're gonna have differences and you deal with them. That's it, hands out to catch, guys. Here we go. Good hands, good hands, good hands. Nice. 
Nicely done. Nice, nice. She is known as the suffragette of Alberta rugby. Razzle dazzle. Here we go. Switch. Helen Wright was founder and first head coach of Pandas Rugby, as well as a pioneer in establishing women's rugby as a national sport. She helped form the Coven in Edmonton in the late 70s, only the third women's rugby team in Alberta. In 1988, she played in the first women's national team game against the U.S. She then served as managing director of the Alberta Rugby Union for 14 years before leading the Pandas to five straight national championships starting in 1999, racking up a storybook record of 36 wins, one tie, and one loss. Since leaving the Pandas, Wright has continued to organize and coach on the local scene. There are girls out there that have degrees that would have never gone to university if we hadn't had a rugby program. This sport just seems to make better people and, and sport in general is just a medium. It's those magic moments, right, when the real fiber, the goodness of humanity kind of comes squeaking through under this pressure of, of this game. If you can set it up, they can kind of find out that they can do more than they thought they could. And there are many, many girls out there who just make me so proud because they, you know, just play it forward, right? And they just took everything that they did and experienced at the university, and they're just really good citizens now. Whoa, watch out, camera guy. <laughs> You're almost toast.